Sleek, powerful, and incredibly accurate, it is a dominating weapon on the battlefield. It is the sniper rifle. Sniping first began during the Battle of Saratoga, which took place during the, ma the American Battle for Independence. This here is a modern reenactment of how the soldiers would be standing. It's easy to see just how easy it would be for a sniper to pick one of these off. This was the Brown Bess rifle. It was basically the standard issue musket at that time. It was incredibly inaccurate, but it's all they had. Sniping made its next appearance during the American Civil War. This was the weapon of choice for the snipers of those days. This is the Sharps rifle. Basically, this was the weapon that we coined the term sharpshooters from. Snipers were really deadly back then. Foot soldiers had no protection against snipers in the open, and this led to many useless deaths. The snipers were picked as the best of the best, and they certainly proved to be. The man pictured is General John Sedgwick. He was overheard telling his senior officers they couldn't hit an elephant in that difference. World War One. This is when sniping really got serious. Scopes were attached to rifles, and the Germans were the first to use these snipers to their advantage. Teams began to be trained especially for sniping, and for a while, the entrenched British and French had no idea what had hit them. At first, they dismissed them as lucky pot shots from the German trenches, but very soon, the sheer consistency of the rise of the death toll made the British change their tune. Soon after, many countries had snipers. This is footage of a Russian sniper team. As you can see, camouflage was, and still is, everything to a sniper. Hiding in bushes, behind rocks, snowdrifts, and pretty much anything they can find, sometimes for whole groups of days at a time, making sure they weren't spotted, was key to survival. The different rifles used by the different countries were all individually designed, however there was virtually no visual difference between them. Pictured first is the German weapon, the Mauser Gewehr 98. Next is the British Lee Enfield Mark III rifle. Then the US Springfield rifle. And finally the Russian Mosan Nagun. World War II saw sniping up its game. Rifles were refined and made even more accurate. Scopes were given greater magnification, and many new attachments, as well as bigger bullets that could shoot straight through walls, were developed. There were two major and impressive displays of sniper ability during World War II. The first is Vasily Zaitsev. He started his career by winning a three-day sniper battle with one single German sniper. He then invented the system of spotter and sniper working together, which is still used by snipers in armed forces today, started a sniper school, the students of which are estimated to have amassed 3,000 kills between them, and to cap it off, he got 242 confirmed kills in three months. I mean, he even had a movie made out of himself. And yeah, that's probably true, to be honest. The second is quite literally a super soldier. His name is Simo Heha. He was a Finnish man who, when the Russians invaded his country, decided that posting up alone all day for three months was a good plan. It most certainly was. He single-handedly held back the Russians with one rifle and a submachine gun. The rifle he used also had no scope, just iron sights. He killed so many foot soldiers that the Russians ordered teams of counter-snipers to take action against him. They were all killed. Next, the Russians ordered artillery strikes. Shrapnel battered Simo's coat and his body but he remained at his post. He clearly got bored of the artillery, as one day he took himself on a special mission to stop these strikes. He literally crawled his way to win within 100 metres of an artillery battery, aimed and fired. Two shots later, he was done and crawled back to his post again. But what had he done? With two shots, he had shattered each lens of the artillery battery's periscopic sighting scope. That is accuracy. Later, caught by surprise, a Russian soldier seeking out Simo, who hadn't even noticed Simo was right next to him and only noticed when he fired and dropped to reload, a close combat fight ensued. The Russian was dead and a stray bullet fired by his pistol 
had, according to Sumo's Finnish colleagues who found him later, taken half his cheek off. Sumo regained consciousness on a day of peace, in a hospital to a sore head and a heap load of metal. His final kill total? 705 confirmed kills. 505 alone with his Mozan Nagant, unscoped, ironically Russian, rifle, and 200 with his Suomi submachine gun. At 5 foot 3, he was also the smallest troll ever. He lived to 95 and died in 2002 of natural causes. This man, quite literally, was a killing machine. Hey ho and Zaitsev were a huge part of the history of the sniper rifle and sniping itself. Zaitsev's spotter and sniper method is used all over the world today. What it entails is one sniper who pulls the trigger and a spotter who uses a set of binoculars or a handheld scope to scan for targets that the sniper hasn't spotted. Heyo's unbelievable records also led snipers to strive for better and higher objectives, such as the longest confirmed kill, which is currently held by Corporal Craig Harrison at 2,475 metres. In any case, sniping is a huge part of modern warfare. It became a highly sought after job in the army, and it still is. Eventually, however unrealistically, sniping found its way into modern video games. This is the Barrow signing off with some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 gameplay played by yours truly. Thanks for watching.